Welcome to Bronze Dead Place, where I have been playing a ton of Immortals Phoenix Rising. This game kind of came out of nowhere for me. It completely fell off the radar and then exploded out of nowhere to be a fantastic game. The reviews may be mixed, but trust me, this is a fun one out there. Like any open world RPG, you want to know what's going to get you the most bang for your buck early on in the game. And therefore, we've got this list put together to tell you the best abilities to start the game with. These are the abilities that are going to move you through the game faster and give you more success in your exploration and your combat. So with that, let's dive in. What types of abilities are there in the game? Well, you've got your skills and your godly powers. The skills are minor actions, passive combos, and the godly powers are, well, powers. They're activatable damage dealers that consume stamina. These are the big bads of the game, so I kind of want to dive through these first. You've got Athena's Dash, a forward lunging strike. Heracles Strength, which is learned automatically. It's your boulder lifting and throwing, your puzzle solver, and your stun. You've got Ares Wrath, which is an AoE ground attack. Phosphor's Attack, which is a single target utility skill. Apollo's Arrow, unlocked automatically, that allows for you to remote control your arrows for your attacks and your puzzles. And finally, Hephaestus' Hammer, a huge ground slam. All of these are available to unlock from the start of the game, except for one, which is the Phoenix Phosphor. Trust me, you want to unlock this Phoenix. No matter how you play the game, this bird is one of the most useful things you can possibly get. Not only will it attack enemies and drop stamina balls for you, but it will fill their stun bar, turn you invisible, or create copies of you to use on pressure plates, which is a total shortcut to all the puzzles in the game. In order to get this bird, you need to complete the first part of the Bolt Out of the Blue quest. This will unlock as you explore and collect items, and for me it happened immediately after grabbing an Ambrosia as I approached Aphrodite's statue. I don't know the exact format for unlocking this thing right now, but gather everything you see, explore the map, this will unlock for you, and as soon as it comes up, do that quest. As for how to unlock your ability upgrades, you're gonna need these coins of Haran, Charon or Charon or, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, you're gonna get your coins of Haran by completing challenges throughout the world. Anytime you dive your fist through a yellow orby thing into the underworld, you're gathering the River of Sticks coins. These will usually come in pairs, so anticipate that if something costs six coins, you probably need to do three activities, but you may get rewarded more based on the difficulty of that activity. For instance, if you play the giant lyre and it's a three note melody, I noticed I was getting two coins, and if it was a six note melody, I noticed I got more. But again, your mileage may vary. You need to progress through the story until you've unlocked the Hall of the Gods. You can use your coins there to purchase upgrades. Upgrades for skills are generally just bigger numbers, more hits, less stamina use, etc. Upgrades for godly powers are additional effects. They change the way the skill can be used. So godly powers cost more, but are more impactful in battle. Skills cost less, but may just influence your playstyle. You can unlock everything as the game progresses, but some upgrades are better than others, especially when you're starting out the game. I already mentioned that your first unlock should be the Phoenix, but it probably won't be your actual first. Hopefully you completed some challenges before you actually unlock the Phoenix quest, so get the Phoenix as soon as you can, but your first real purchase should be Hephaestus's hammer. It's a powerful attack, it's AoE, it's good on stamina use, it changes your way you approach combat. Most combat encounters will be multiple enemies, so having an AoE attack on hand is always valuable. It uses a ton of stamina, but you can recover it quickly with your sword attacks. It's also able to nearly one-shot most intro enemies, including the bears, which will absolutely abuse you at the beginning of the game. For that reason alone, I make this my first purchase. After that, you're going to focus on exploration, so you've got one ability to help you in combat, but exploration is the name of the game. This is an open world after all. So therefore, Climb Leap, Glide Boost, Swim Dash, and Telekinesis Gathering are among the most useful skills in this game. The first three of which reduce stamina consumption. So jump up the hills as you climb, increase your vertical speed as you glide, or simply dive through the water like a dolphin. These are all great skills, and the fact they consume less stamina means you can get away with not upgrading that as quickly. 
Telekinesis Gathering saves time and button presses. I guess you could skip it for a little while if you love touching every plant personally, but that's a little creepy. This unlocks automatic gathering via horseback, so it's going to save you time on button presses. It's going to save you time as you explore. It's going to allow you to do more in the game quicker. So why would you not get this skill? Now you've got one thing to help you in combat. You've got your exploration skills in place. You're going to need to help your combat a little more as you're unlocking more and more challenges. So therefore, get the rest of your godly powers. Don't worry about the upgrades quite yet unless you want them. Just focus on the core godly powers first. This will complete all your general rotations and give you all your available options in combat for at least the start of the game. Then we're going to switch back to skills. Pick up what impacts your playstyle. If you're a fan of hitting the parry button, go ahead and pick up the upgrades for parry. These are counter attacks per weapon, meaning you add additional attacks into your rotation. Always a good thing. If you're not good at hitting the parry button and instead prefer to dodge, then pick up those skills instead. Same thing that it's in a counter attack per weapon, but there's also a skill that allows you to increase your number of dodges up to five. If you like to dodge, dodge more. Just, it just makes sense. If you're a bow user, unlock headshots. They are not a thing in the game until you unlock them, so you probably want these if you play with that bow a lot. Same goes with the other skills here. You've got skills that focus on attacks after running, increasing your sword damaging combos, your axe combos, etc. It's all about how you want to play and ensuring that the game supports you through that journey. Again, you're going to be able to unlock everything, but that's your order of priority first. Get Hephaestus's hammer, it's incredibly useful and almost game breaking. Fill out your exploration, get the rest of your godly powers, then see how you want to play the game. And just don't forget about that phoenix. Go get that phoenix right away. This has been the quick guide to the best abilities to start out in Immortals Phoenix Rising. I hope you're enjoying this game as much as I am. It's super awesome. It's like, it goes even deeper into the lore than Odyssey did. It's got all sorts of adult humor mixed in with technically child-friendly language. It is such a cool and unique game that really came out of nowhere for me. So I plan to produce a couple more videos on it. I plan to try and beat the game. I haven't been able to beat games recently, but this one, this one is on the list. So if you want more content about Immortals Phoenix Rising or any other big games coming out, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. The engagement on this video helps my video get shown to more people. And hopefully you found this useful enough to help show it to other people. Thank you so much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. And until next time, see ya. The sea tossed and turned. Waves churned to a throne. The line between sky and sea all but vanished. The mountainous peaks of the waves descended into valleys nearly as deep as Tartarus. You're really painting a picture here.